Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the fathers' houses. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness. But David had brought up the ark of God from Kirjath-Jerim to the place David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. You know, it's interesting to me because Gibeon and wisdom are two words that are important in First and Second Chronicles. Now, Gibeon was a unique and strong spot for Israel's worship. This ancient city, meaning a hill place, is mentioned 40 times in the Old Testament. During Joshua's time, it was known as a great city. It was the people of Gibeon who tricked Israel by pretending they were from a distant land. Now, this is all covered in Joshua chapter 9. We read it. In a covenant to fulfill their promise to protect Gibeon, well, Joshua attacks five kings who brought down a portion of Gibeon in a unique strike. Though through Joshua's prayer and God's miraculous intervention, the day was lengthened for the battle of Israel, which Israel actually won, and that's in Joshua 10. You can also read about that in Isaiah 28, 21. Now, wisdom and knowledge were two things that Solomon asked of God. Now, in the Bible, wisdom does not simply refer to someone who's smart. Actually, it has a deeper spiritual element. There is no question that God's wisdom is greater than any wisdom that we know here on earth. So when God says in Proverbs, I have stored up wisdom for you, that kind of wisdom is spiritual as well as physical. In fact, it's less physical than it is spiritual. That means that we know more. And there are people who make the decision today, well, there's nothing here except the physical. Well, okay, that's a willingness to become ignorant because every human being on the planet has a spiritual nature. And spiritual is in two forces, good and, and evil. And the good is God and evil is a fallen angel. So God has allowed us through the free will to make decisions. And if we make decisions in the right way, then that's great. We ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our heart and be Lord of our life. We believe that he came on the earth and he was crucified 2,000 years ago and then rose again. Very important that we understand this concept. And by the way, it'd be a good time to get the Bible guide out and turn to today's passage because as we focus on this, the Lord will help us learn. So if you don't have your Bible guide, why not? Use the address at the bottom of the screen or you can call us and uh, we'd be happy to respond to you. If, if it's after hours, just leave a message. And uh, also you can go to www.bibledeskoveryguide.com. Bible Discovery Guide. Dot com. When you go there, it'll take you to the web or to the uh, uh, Bible guide, and uh, you can make a donation in any amount. That'd be wonderful. 
And we'll send you a Bible guide. It'll also give you the PDF version, which is exciting, by the way. That is great. Today, wisdom and knowledge, two words that are very important. 2 Chronicles 1. Father, I pray today as we launch into the second part of this book, as we move forward into looking at and understanding what Solomon's doing, I pray, Lord, that we would hear you and learn from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Look at the scripture. This is really something. As we focus on this, we learn some things. Now, Solomon, the son of David, was strengthening his kingdom, and the Lord... His God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. The Lord did that. And Solomon spoke to all Israel and to the captains of the guard, or thousands rather, and of hundreds, to the judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the fatherless houses. And then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon. Interesting. The high place at Gibeon. For the tabernacle of the Lord, or the tabernacle of meeting with God, was there. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made it in the wilderness. What? Exactly. That tabernacle was in Gibeon. But David had brought the ark of God from Kerith Jerem to the place David had prepared for it. For he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Interesting. Now, we need to pay attention to this because God is going to do something here. The placement of the temple was not fixed yet. We're in that transition time. We must allow God to dwell in the center of our hearts in order to be protected and blessed. How does that happen? Well, you know, God has to come into our life and do some things. And we pray, and if you're somebody who does not know the Lord, let me give you a good example. We pray for you all the time. And you've got people praying for you. In fact, probably people have sent in a prayer request praying for you. So, you know, we prayed for you. What does that mean? It means that God is working in your life to get things ready so that he can come and place his temple in your heart. Very important. Without prayer, nothing happens. Prayer is so incredibly important. We must remember that, beloved. Very, very important. Okay, let's move on in the scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. 5 says, Now the bronze altar that Beezo the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord which was at the tabernacle of meeting. And he offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. That is a lot of offerings, my friend. Now, let me explain this. Solomon made offerings on the older altar made by Moses at the tabernacle of meeting. God honors his previous work with people, places, and things. I need to tell you something. In your life, you will build up the things that had brought you to the Lord, then from there you will build up even more. God brings those things into your life to tell us and to remind us of the things he's done. So don't try to forget. God will keep it in your heart. He will keep it in your spirit. All the things that he did for you. That's exactly what's happening here because there's a transition and God is speaking in that transition. Solomon is supervising. Now let's go back to the scripture. We'll learn some more. Second Chronicles 1, 7 to 10. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Solomon, ask what shall be given to you. Ask. Interesting. He wants Solomon to say it. And Solomon said to God, well, you have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established. For you have made me king over people, a people like the dust of the earth in multitudes. Now, give me wisdom and knowledge. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go and come in before this people. 
for who can judge this great people of yours? That is outstanding. God's mercy is faithful. Remember that. His mercy is faithful. Remember, there are blessings we live with today because of those before us. There are blessings we live today with because of those before us. God will grant wisdom and knowledge to help us move ahead. So everything that we do, everything that we, uh, we, we do now affects the future. All the decisions we make in our life affects the future. So it's not just about us now. We're not isolated to ourselves. But there's other people, beloved. We need to pay attention because those people will live with the results of our decisions. Father, help us today to remember all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. We just want to say thank you to our partners who've helped us all get this far and continue to do so. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to us.